Hey, how's it going? I'm Kevin McMullen, and hopefully you got to check out the performance of In the Nile, the Egyptian track from Age of Mythology. Uh, if you did, awesome, thank you. If you didn't, link below, go check it out. Uh, so yeah, had a moment to myself here for the most part. Most of the Kevins are out and about, but we have one in the kitchen. Say hi, Kevin. Hi, Kevin. Anyway, uh, so yeah, I was going to talk a little bit about some of the instrumentation and uh, the original process for recording that song. Um, it was for when you choose the Egyptian Civ in Age of Mythology, you get a little bit of music. And uh, obviously I wanted to do something with an Egyptian sound to it, though I didn't have any instruments. I had some percussion, but no melodic instruments uh, that I could do that with. So I got this sucker. Got this food from Lark in the Morning. Uh, we used to get a lot of stuff from Lark in the Morning. Great place. Uh, now, I didn't know how to play it. I did some research, uh, noodled around a bit, figured out a melody that I thought I could pull off without having to record it a thousand times. So I got it in about 692 takes, I think. Uh, but anyway, um, Sounded awesome, sounded great, was glad I went through with it instead of using a sample or something like that. Uh, and then 19 years later, still have the oud. And 19 years later, I still only know that melody. But, very cool uh, instrument to have and sounds really awesome. Obviously, a lot of percussion is going on uh, in this track. And in the performance, you also saw a lot of clapping. And one of the cool things about the clapping, or how that came about on the original track, was I was working on the song at the studio, and Stephen Rippey, who uh, my best friend and uh, also composer uh, on the Age Games, um, he was across the hall and I said, hey, I need to get some clash. I just moved into this new home, had an empty garage, and said, do you wanna go? We'll go do some clapping in the garage, and because it has some cool reverb, even though it's just you know drywall and uh, concrete, but turned out to be pretty cool. We did several, laid down several tracks of it, and uh, really dug that sound. Ended up really working out pretty well. Uh, so that was pretty cool. Also had some interesting things. Uh, there's some shakers on there, yeah, multiple, but including this one. Now this, I believe, came from uh, a store we used to frequent in Benton, Texas called uh, Voyager's Dream. A little bit of a head shop, music shop, clothing shop, just everything there. Uh, and did have a ton of instruments. and. This piece was really cool, it's just a little dry seed shaker, and it has just a very, very cool soft sound, uh, very organic sound, and um, actually used to have two pieces to it, one just like this, and when Ensemble Studios closed down, uh, Steven and I split up a lot of the instruments, and we actually split this one in half because we both liked it so much, we wanted to hold on to that, so that was very cool. Uh, also, when I recorded it, I used to have, or we used to have this uh, instrument that was a um, handmade African uh, kind of tambourine S instrument and um, made with bottle caps, flattened bottle caps. I don't have that one anymore, uh, but I really, really love the sound, so I ended up making my own. I'm not a carpenter. Sorry. Sorry about that. Where was I? Uh, right. Not a carpenter, but it works, uh, and the sound is just so great. It's not quite as harsh as a tambourine, and you can do some other sort of a little longer kind of sounds, uh, uh, little jingly kind of sounds that just work a little better than a tambourine. Um, and I don't know the, the nature of it; just seemed to fit the song really nicely. So love having this, uh, and I've used it on many other things as well. Um, and then also. Oh, yeah, actually, before I get to that, there was uh, a question online in the comments, on the YouTube comments. Uh, who is that from? Hey, Kevin. Hey, Kevin. What's up? Who, who was the one on uh, the YouTube comments that was asking about what was on the couch? It was uh, Dobo. Dobo. That's right. Thanks. Uh, so, yes, Dobo had asked what was on the couch in the performance, and it was this, the Age of Mythology Collector's Edition. Uh, and this one, there were 50,000 made, and this, if you can believe it, is number 24,952. Uh, but pretty cool. Love having some of that old memorabilia. And what else do we have around here? Right. The frame drum. Now this thing 
sounds as cool now as it did when I got it 20 years ago. Um, and it's meant to be played with the fingers, um, but when I recorded the track, I really like the sound of a drumstick up against it, frankly, uh, especially hitting the wooden rim here. Uh, it just had a really nice, you know, cutting sound. Uh, and it was very bright and recorded really, really well. So when I did the performance, uh, I was using these smaller, softer little sticks uh, just because I didn't want to look ridiculous uh, holding drumsticks against it. Um, sure, you're not really technically supposed to do that, but again, you record. You do whatever you need to do to get the sounds you want. So, very cool. Love having that thing. Oops. Come on. Sorry. Thanks, dude. Anyway, uh, I guess on that note, I uh, should probably wrap it up. So yeah, um, if you haven't checked out the track, link below, give it a shot. Otherwise, hope you're safe and healthy and doing well. And, uh, I'll do this again. We'll see. Cheers.